Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Yes, I can hear. This is the first time I've ever done a class or a workshop remotely, so uh, bear with me. And um, can you see okay what I'm doing? I have pre-cut some flowers, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. What I'd like to do first is to establish my shape. And uh, so I'm going to do that with this. You know, I'll bet you they can't see it because you're right behind it. Oh, uh, what should I do? Gary's thinking you can't see can what you I'm see doing. The, uh, Rage, you can't see the flowers at all, can you? No, I can see yeah. them. Just make sure everybody goes to speaker view. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm uh, just establishing the shape here. And what I've started with is... Uh, the Wet Foam Oasis, which you can buy at any craft store. And uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, I see what you did. <laughs> That's better. So I'm just using the fall colors with the idea of, you know, the fall, fall arrangement. And uh, establishing the shape here with the flowers. And we're going to make this one um, like an all-around, like if you were having it on a centerpiece on a table. And um, usually, you know, when the flowers, I pretty well use everything from home, but um, I've had to buy these. But um, just I just got a bouquet at uh, Safeway. So I'm going to start putting some of the greens in and these are just um, greens that I got from the yard. There's a lot of things that most of us have. This is sarcococa, which has um, in, the, in January it has a nice little white flower that's very fragrant. Is anyone familiar with that? I'm not. This is Marge. Oh, hi. Hi. So I have I have this one by my front door because it has such a nice scent and those little flowers in January are just really pleasant. Can you tell us the name of that again? Sarka Coca. Um S A R C A C O C uh, C-O-A, something like that. If I could write it out, I could get it for you. Of course. Thank you. Uh -huh. But it's, um, it's pretty readily available at a nursery. Or... And then I have boxwood that I'll use. And um, I'll use... Um, Blueberries, huckleberries, they both have really good foliage. And I'm going to work on this front a little bit, and then I'm going to spin it. So you can be able to see where I was in the front. And um, one thing when you're working with the oasis, you want to Make sure that the bottom of your flower is smooth, because if you have one of those little nubbins, it's going to spin. Do you cut it in mangle when you cut it? Um, it's not quite so important with these. Gary's asking, that, do I cut it at an angle? Um, but yes, I guess I guess I pretty well do. So I'm not quite finished with the front, but I'm going to spin this around and work on the back. And sometimes if you're going to put your arrangement on a buffet, it's not necessary to totally finish the back, but um, like I said, I'm doing this with the idea that um, it would be on a table that you wanted to be able to view from all around. And when you're 
selecting the flowers, if you like I'm using, I think there were four different kinds of chrysanthemums in this package, you want to um, kind of mix it up so you don't just have a line of one kind of flower. like I started to do there. And because I pre-cut these, it's going pretty fast. I thought that uh, I wouldn't probably have enough time to get it all the way done, but that saved quite a bit of time. don't have anybody who uh, has flowers there and is working along, do I? Everybody's just observing. Okay. And we will have time for questions afterwards. So, Mark, since, since I, I can ask questions. Yes, yes, please do. <laughs> um, if you're starting, so before you started out, you have a small base there, and then you have uh -huh. a green blob in there. What is that's, that? That's called uh, oasis. And if you're buying it, you want to make sure that you're getting oasis and not Sahara. O oasis will soak up water, and you want to thoroughly soak that before you start. And uh, then the other one that they have is called Sahara, and that's for um, dry derangements. And do you have to put water in the vase? I have a little bit of water in here. Most of the water is in the um, is in the foam. Okay. Okay. But um, if I were doing it at home, I would have more water in it. But just for transportation, because I had this set up when we've been able to do the in-person classes, um, we do those where there's a small charge and we furnish all the supplies. So we have. Under those circumstances, we were able to have people just doing the arrangements while um, they were there and having all the supplies furnished. So this is a this is a little different. Normally, you know, I would be going around and helping people if if they want help and talking about the flowers we have and um, just these. All of these are chrysanthemums except for this eucalyptus. And this is um, what they call glycerinized eucalyptus. It's been preserved. So, um, yeah, there's such a variety of chrysanthemums. And and this is uh, just, these are preserved leaves that I'm sticking in here as well. And I'm going to spin that around, and I will finish off this part here. I'm going back now and just kind of uh, tucking in a different color where I need it. So, can you see. show them what a branch of? So, when you're buying, what is it you might buy, um, and what's the thought pattern? This was this was all one bunch of uh, fall flowers, all chrysanthemums, and uh, so for about I think it was um, about thirteen dollars. But this is this was a lot of flowers. But I still have this many. So you could even, um, if you were going to make an arrangement, you could even um, maybe share one of those large bunches with a friend, and it would be enough for both of you. So cut flowers are just something that can really add to the ambiance of a dinner table or a buffet.
I'm just going to put a little more of the eucalyptus in here. And this is something that this preserved eucalyptus, you can save this from time to time. It will last for a long time. So it's not just a one and done. So do you have any tips on how to create a good balance? Um, mainly the variety of flowers and trying to intermingle them where you don't just have a line of the same thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so you want to make a, a make sure that you have a good distribution of color, right? Yeah. And, and height about. also? Pardon? Um, a variety of height, is yeah. that also? That's where uh, I started out with the shape, this is the uh, tallest, and then I wanted to have the sides about equal coming out. And uh, this is probably one of the more simpler ways to do it. You can do line arrangements too where you would have uh, you know tall on one side and then angled down to the other. But um, I was just trying to keep it simple. Something else in here. So um, that is pretty well finished. Stick another one of these in behind this greenery. So that's pretty well it. I don't know how well you can see that. I can just spin it. I do have, um, I just see a, I see a space here. And you don't have to work with a turntable, but I thought it would be helpful for, um, you know, doing this, make it easier to see. So I'm going to move this over and I wanted to show one really simple thing that can be done. It doesn't take a lot of design. I don't have water in these, but um, this works really well to have it along a table. Let's see. I need to put that up. Excuse me just a minute. I just put these up here. I think you can see better. So but what I would do with this is just have this running down if you have a long table. And you could just use any kind of odds and ends that you have for, uh, for um, Christmas or winter. It works really well to just use um, evergreens from your yard, garden. And uh, very simple to do. And then I've done them where I just put a few small bulbs in, like uh, Christmas ornaments or something. So I don't have any more greens. Normally I would put some greens in that too, but um, you just space these out. It's very simple. It takes a very small amount of flowers. I do have some more eucalyptus. I'm kind of surprised that I got that other one done that fast. I didn't think I would. You're better at this than you thought. <laughs> I've, I've done it for quite a while. I used to work uh, professionally as a floral designer some years back. So I'm just kind of using up, using up the little odds and ends that I had cut. But you can see how simple this would be with your um, Christmas greens or any kind of any kind of foliage. I 
And you can always do it, just kind of arrange it in your hand like I was doing there and then just stick it in your base. And then mix that up a little bit. These are some that I already have pre-cut for the sides of the other arrangement. So I can't really space it out here so you can see, but um, that's, that's what can be done very simply and just run those down your table. And if you had um, some of the regular leaves or these glycerinized leaves, preserved leaves, you can just uh, lay that right on the table. So, good idea. I like that. It's it's just very very easy to do. It doesn't take any design experience. So there we are. Questions? Please go ahead and and ask them. Does anybody have a question? I have one about dahlias. What is the best way to preserve the cut flowers so they'll um, sit in the vase? That's kind of a whole process. They have um, some supplies that you can buy. I haven't done any of that for a long time because um, it was pretty expensive. They had this product that you submerge things in. And um, it's just so simple just to buy them. <laughs> that makes sense. You were wanting to preserve your own dahlias? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that if you look that up online, you'd be able to get some information about it. But I'm, I'm not a good source for that. Sure. I've tried a few methods and had minimal success. I was just curious if you had any experience. This, it's been a long time ago when I was in floral design school, we got into some of that, but that's been a long time ago. So. Sure. All right. Thank you. I'm sure they have better better products now than they did then. Sure. Okay. Anyone else? I'm, I hope. I'm I hope. not able to read the chat question, so if you had a question in chat, would you please just go ahead and speak up? I don't see so, it. When you do the little individual you know ones do you put water in those yes yes okay. I, I just didn't do that here eileen right i under i i figured you must but i thought well maybe because yeah. sometimes it can be yeah. mess yeah. i thought well maybe you just don't worry about it or if i would get to them and um i just i just didn't go and get water here uh -huh. okay that makes sense and all of these all of these flowers that i use today are really long lasters, so you probably would, um, they last well well over a week or more. Yeah. And important thing is to uh, change your water often. That makes a big difference. And I didn't really say anything about this, but you want to make sure, like if you're using a base, that you don't have foliage below the water line, because when that deteriorates, and that's, that's what makes the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So, hey Gary, there's no questions in chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you for checking. So, um, anything else? Anybody else have any questions or? What we need is to have you come and do arrange them for us. <laughs> 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 it's very nice. It makes such a difference when uh, we're doing it in person because like I said we uh, furnish we would used to furnish those supplies and everything and then you just have all that interaction and I think with the floral design like most things if you're doing if you've got some hands-on then it just makes all the difference you can really retain and get the mechanics of it but um, I think this it's, this makes it more of a challenge, just like a lot of things are now. But um, I hope that you enjoyed watching. And uh, are there any more questions?